Our reserves are our strategic assets, built up through the discipline and prudence of our people and political leaders across generations. Our reserves have served as a bulwark against shocks and crises of an extraordinary nature. For a nation with no oil, no gas, no gold, no diamonds, or natural resources of any kind, it is remarkable that we have built this up. Our prudence and discipline in saving and growing our reserves give us the wherewithal to respond decisively when our nation faces extraordinary circumstances. Our founding fathers created a rigorous framework to ensure that such strategic assets are used only for the right purpose. We amended the Constitution in 1991 to provide for an elected president who is a custodian of our past reserves. Under Article 148A of the Constitution, the president can withhold her assent to any supply bill if she is of the view that it is likely to draw on past reserves. Our principle is that each term of government must live within its means. Any additional spending that the government of the day proposes must be funded in a sustainable manner. Recurrent expenditures should be, refund, should be funded from recurrent revenues. Past reserves can be, drawn, can be drawn down only in exceptional circumstances under a two-key system. If the President, after consulting the Council of Presidential Advisers, agree with the government's proposal to draw on the past reserves in exceptional circumstances. Despite political pressure to dip into reserves, the government has scrupulously upheld the principle that past reserves are to be used only for exceptional circumstances. Until now, the government has drawn on past reserves only once, during the global financial crisis, when the president approved a draw of $4.9 billion to fund the Jobs Credit Scheme and Special Risk Sharing Initiative. During the period, the government also sought the President's concurrence to use $150 billion of past reserves to back the Deposit Guarantee Scheme. I was in MAS at that time when we had to ask for this, and it took us a long time to deliberate on this before we even did that. As it turned out, the guarantee was not triggered, and there was no draw on the past reserves. The COVID-19 pandemic and the multiple threats it poses to our nation is the sort of event that we had accumulated reserves for. We have saved up for a rainy day. The COVID-19 pandemic is already a mighty storm and is still growing. If over the years we have frittered the reserves away on more immediate but less existential needs, big and small, as some in this House have pressed the government to do, we will be in a much weaker position today. We are experiencing a confluence of multiple external shocks, a pandemic that has triggered many nations to shut their borders, limit exports and halt economic activities in order to fight this pandemic. The economic impact is magnified as the global economy is already fragile and further weakened by a protracted US-China trade conflict and an oil price war. So this is not a normal business cycle that we would have anticipated and dealt with using the revenues collected by each term of government. It is a black swan event that comes only once every few decades. In view of the exceptional circumstances, the government has sought the president's in-principle support to use past reserves to fund part of the package.